Last year, I took the Nobel challenge for me to focus on using what I already have. Today, I want to show you all the non-makeup beauty products that I used up from my stash in the past 12 months. I also added up the marketing value for all the products here to see just how much money I used up in a year for the game of beauty care. And let me just tell you, the total is a little bit over 2000, which is alerting to me. And I have so much thought that was triggered by this empty. I think I'm gonna have to make a separate video for that so we can just focus on the empties today. Before we dig in, I want to give a big welcome to those of you who recently joined this channel. We are officially over 200 subscribers. I wanna thank each one of you for being a part of this. Now let's dig into the empties. The Dove shampoo. I would repurchase it if I run into it, but it's not something that on top of my mind that I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great shampoo. No, it's, it's just a shampoo. Mm, the Neutrogena Anti-Residue Shampoo. This is the original one. They have reformulated this two years ago. Now they don't carry this one anymore. This is the clear one, which was kind of a bummer because uh, this has been a staple for me for the past decade. For now, I have no interest to try the new one. Uh, Unscented with Chisel Facial Toner. I don't think this did anything more than water can do. For $17, this is a escape for me. Aveno Baby Lotion is an okay lotion, not great. A home frequency from Clean. This one I used up earlier this year through my project pan. No, I won't be repurchasing this. I think this retails for $27. Not worth the money. I used up two of the Lancome Makeup Remover Milk. This was not bad, to be honest. Well, I use this just as a cleansing balm. Like I actually put it on my dry face, massage it in, then I add a little bit of water for it to emulsify. It does a good job removing makeup, but I have to go in with a double cleanse afterwards. And this one for 50 millimeters is worth $11 for the market value. I don't think I'll be repurchasing this. I much prefer a cleansing balm. It does a better job than this. This one, I didn't use it up, but I decided to throw it in here anyways, because it is a skincare product that's getting out of my way. This is the 3-in-1 cleanser, toner, and makeup remover. Did not get this. It's horrible. And this retails for $20. Such a waste of money, <laughs> in my opinion. A treatment lotion from Origins. This was great compared to this one. I love the scent and it feels like it did something for my skin, but I won't be repurchasing this. I thought I wouldn't mind to repurchase this, but for this little bottle, the retail price is $28. It's a good toner, but it's not worth $28. I'd rather spend my money somewhere else. Two other Origins products that I'm decluttering. So this one was in my recent declutter video, but I got the wrong product. I was supposed to be talking about this one, the cleanser. I didn't like the cleanser, so that was a declutter. And this one is a mask. I tried it several times. I don't think I like it. I would use it for the sake of using it but it's not enjoyable, nor I feel like it does anything for my skin. And I decided it's not worth my time to go through that. So I'm decluttering this too. This little mask is retailed for $26. And this is worth $10 based on its retail price, which is not too bad. Unfortunately, it's not a product that I enjoy. This is the, okay. This is so far my favorite cleansing balm. This is a Chinese brand. I think this is my second bottle and I used it up entirely. It smells good, it removes all the makeup and it emulsifies very beautifully. It comes with a little spatula, which I lost a long time ago. <laughs> I love this cleanser. I'll definitely repurchase this when I have a chance. At the time when I purchased this cleanser, it was retailed for around $30, but now I think they lowered the price to somewhere around $15 or $20. I think it's worth every penny in my opinion. A Glam Glow Cleanser. This is really old. It was a good cleanser, but as time goes by, my skin got a little bit drier, right? So I was not able to tolerate this cleanser. My husband ended up using this one up for me, and I think he enjoyed how drying this one was on his skin. Well, obviously this one is now discontinued. If frankly, even if it's still on the market, it's not worth it, and there's better cleansers on the market for sure. This one, I do not like. I'm not sure if I'm the only one. They used to have a set of three samples of this mask, where it has the black mask, a white mask, and I think a green tea mask or something. It's green. The white mask in that sample set was so good. And that's why I bought this one because it's supposed to be the same, but it wasn't. The white mask in that set was a pure white. It doesn't have any iridescent. It gets a closer contact with your skin. So when you remove it after it dries, it has a little bit power to remove some debris from your pores. But this one, because of the iridescent, it doesn't really stick to the skin. So it was very easy for you to remove it. It doesn't pull anything off your pores. It doesn't do anything more than just hydrating, which was not what I got it for. Well, I kind of regretted why I didn't return this as soon as I noticed it was different. But anyways, after several years, I finally used it up and definitely won't be repurchasing this. This retails for $38. 
a Peter Thomas Ruth conditioner. Yeah, this was a very so-so conditioner. Despite it has some good reviews online, it's not good. <laughs> it's not worth it. The Ordinary Buffet Serum. I finished three. I keep on buying this because it is an easy serum. The Bumble and Bumble Invisible Oil for Your Hair. Now, when we're purchasing this, two of the Elizabeth Arden Vitamin C Ceramide Capsules. This runs up to be $50 a bottle, and it comes with 30 capsules. Um, I like this. I like how thin it feels and when I use it, I do notice a difference with my skin in terms of my skin texture and overall my skin complexion. So I will repurchase this but perhaps not on the full price. I will pay attention when it goes on sale and buy it at a bargain. Also finished this 30mm serum from Lancome. This overall is a good serum. For now, I'm not interested in repurchasing it. I think there is better options on the market for the given price. Two cleansers from Lancome. This was not bad, but it's not my favorite. I used to use the blue version of this. That one I like much better. If I do consider repurchasing, I'll be repurchasing the blue one, not this one. Uh, sunscreen. This is my favorite sunscreen. Well, a couple of things I like. It's very budget friendly. It dries down really fast. Once it dries, it doesn't feel greasy. It feels like it's just your skin. It doesn't feel like you have anything on your skin, which was actually why I quickly fall in love with this. It works great under makeup and it doesn't peel. Also, it does not irritate my skin. If you struggle with sunscreen being greasy or taking forever to dry, maybe you should give this a try. It's really good. I also finished two perfume this year. Both of these have 50 millimeters of products. One is from Givenchy that I finished in the middle of the year through my project pack. This retails for 109. Would I repurchase this? No, but if I do have a sample here and there, I wouldn't refuse. This one from Chanel is a good scent, I'm not gonna lie. And I would consider repurchasing it if I don't have so many bottles of perfume on hand. On a second thought, I don't think I'll spend $140 on perfume again. Yeah, that's not the game I'm on right now. I also finished an eye cream from L'Oreal. Mm, didn't like this. I didn't hate it. It just had nothing for me to like it. A day cream and a night cream from Weichi. This was okay, but I don't think I liked it enough. For 50 millimeter products, those retails for 17, almost $18 each. It's definitely not worth it. I also finished the Believe True Cream Aqua Bomb. This, this feels just like the Neutrogena one. If I would be repurchasing this kind of cream, I would go for the Neutrogena one. The La Mer Moisturizing Soft Cream. This was insanely expensive. This is a 60 millimeter size and this retails for $515 on Sephora. It's not a question that it's not worth $500. If this retails for $100, I probably would repurchase it again and again because it is a good cream, especially during the winter season when my skin is really, really dry. This works great, but I can also do without it. A retinol cream from Olay. This is retailed for $45. I know there's a lot of good advertisement or good review here online for this one. I honestly don't think it's worth it. If it is marketed for, say, $25, then I think it's worth it. But for $45, no. Oh, hi. This is actually the second day. Yesterday towards the end, the light got very dark. I ended up finished filming the whole video, but the footage was just too grainy for me to use. So I decided might as well just refilmed the part where it got too dark. Another shampoo I finished from Gioco. I forgot to put this in the bag yesterday. This is a pretty decent shampoo, although I don't think I'll be repurchasing it for the price. This retails for $19 on Amazon. A walnut scrap from Ole Henriksen. This is retailed for $38. It is very similar to the one from the drugstore. The apricot scrap that has been on the market for the longest time. And to my experience, they're identical in terms of the texture and what it does. I actually think the drugstore one works better. And that one is around $5. So yeah, definitely save your money. Go for the drugstore one. I also finished uh, uh, Elizabeth Arden, the Ceramide Eye Capsules. I used this jar to store some of my setting powder. That's why it looks a little bit dirty. This is my first jar. I still have another jar that I'm using. I don't know how I feel about this. It's almost like a serum for your eye. So I can't really use this as an eye cream for added hydration because the texture is so thin and my skin does not absorb it as quick as I want it to. So by the time I'm putting my face cream it doesn't have enough time for it to absorb and usually they just kind of blend together overall i'm not very satisfied with this i just don't think it does anything or make any difference on my skin a cream from lancome this has been discontinued and this is the last one i have uh, i call this a safe cream because it's it's comfortable the scent is good there's nothing i love about it but there's nothing i can pick on it uh even if this is on the market i won't repurchase this not for the price there's definitely better cream for a better value on the market nowadays
the Tatcha Water Cream. This one was nice, just like any other cream. Nothing special about it. The best thing about this one, I think, is the package. The package is really cute. I don't think this is worth the hype whatsoever. A leave-on face mask. I don't really know about this brand. This was gifted to me. I still have a bigger bottle of this. I enjoy it while I have it. It's not something that I will go out to repurchase. For 50 millimeters, this has a retail value of $22. I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Moisturizing lotion from Cetaphil. I don't care for this. Uh, there's nothing wrong about it. But at the same time, nothing really stood out either. The exfoliate treatment from Sandy Riley. This was a great uh, chemical exfoliate, but for one millimeter, this has a retail value of $3. In my opinion, it's not worth money. There's other chemical exfoliates. Offers a better value with the same result. Ooh, the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This is the favorite for many people for a good reason. It is just so good. And skip the dupes, just go for this original one. If you can go for a sample or if you can go for the smaller size, go for the smaller size because this one has three grams. But for three grams, I think this lasted me uh, well over a year. It is a good value. I, I in my opinion is definitely worth it. I will be repurchasing this. A serum from Drunk Elephant. I personally have really good experience with Drunk Elephant serum. Despite that they're expensive, I actually think they're worth the money for the overall user experience I have with them. This one, however, I don't feel like it did anything. For 5mm of product, this has a retail value of $18. This was a da for me. I also finished a sample size of uh, Sol de Janeiro Coco Cabana Cream. This scent was quite overpowering to me. And this cream in particular had a gel-like texture. I wasn't a fan of this. I had to really push myself to finish this. Uh, the Dr. Dennis Gross Exfoliating. This is a long time favorite. I got the big, big box. <laughs> I think it comes with 60 treatments and it was retailed for $200. It is very expensive, but it also really works. I tried the one from First Aid Beauty. I don't know if they still have it, but I tried it when they first came out. That one, although it was cheaper, it was a waste of money for me because it does not do what this one does. I have dry skin, so I do rely on good exfoliate here and there. I like this one as the chemical exfoliates and for the physical exfoliates I like the philosophy, the micro vitamin C. It leaves your skin so smooth like a baby's bum. But that one takes some time for you to use. It comes with two steps. So I typically use that in the night when I have some time for my skincare. This one comes really handy especially in the morning when you don't have time and you have to do your makeup but you notice your skin is a little bit flaky. This one is a quick rescue. That's why I kind of rely on this and I don't use it all the time. I only use it on the occasions where I need it to. So for the previous box comes with 60 treatments. It lasts me about five years. <laughs> I already repurchased this. At this time I got the 10 treatments one, which should uh, last me for about a year. I also finished another sample size eye cream from Biosense Squillum Bocuccio. <laughs> it's a long name. But I don't have the bottle anymore, so I'll insert a picture to show you which one uh, I'm referring to. That eye cream as a sample size had a retail value of $25. Kind of reminds me quite a lot of the Shiseido eye cream. It has a thick and emollient texture. <laughs> They're both on the anti-aging bracket, and for that price level, I would actually prefer the Shiseido one. And I think that is all for the empties. If my math is correct, <laughs> I hope it is. This has a total retail value of $2,121. It's alarming. Like, what is this? Like, okay, I understand this is $500. So if I remove this, I'm still left with $1,600 worth of empty. I guess I can also remove this. This is representing $200 worth of value. But I did use this one up in like five years. <sighs> Let's remove more of the perfume. This is $300 worth of perfume. And then we're left with $1,100 worth of product. Is that the best I can do? I never thought about it. Oh, I thought I've been spending like $500, even less than $500 on skincare a year. Maybe I'm very, very wrong. Anyways, I have to make another video to talk to you about my thoughts that was triggered by this. I really want to find out what is a reasonable range for me to spend in a year for skincare. I don't think it is reasonable to spend spend even a thousand dollars on skincare yearly. But I'm gonna hold that thought because I have to take a deeper look in terms of how, where the value is adding up. And I'll let you know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this. Don't forget to enjoy yourself. I will see you again. Bye-bye.